subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates. While Cyclone Faraji continues to weaken, and it has degraded quite a bit on satellite since the previous update, it's at 15.7 degrees south, 85.6 degrees east, and is a Category 2 cyclone at this time. Well, when it comes to its current stats, it has winds of 105 miles per hour and a pressure of 966 millibars. It's moving east-southeast at 5 miles per hour, 8 kilometers per hour, and doesn't have a CDPS rating on the CDPS scale due to its lack of impacts to land. Well, here is the storm right now. Again, 105 miles per hour, 966 millibars. It's got in its northeastern quadrant um, tropical storm force winds extending out 75 nautical miles, 70 nautical miles on the northwestern side, 110 on the southwestern side, and 125 on the southeastern side. Here are the distances from location Seabreeze Village. This is about 1,036 miles away from Port Martha. It's about 1,000. 441 miles away from Caranavan, it's about 1,960 miles away from Geraldton, it's 2,086 miles away, and from Karapa, it is 2,111 miles away. So it is nowhere near any land areas at this time. Really not expected to impact land, but that doesn't mean the storm's going to be going away anytime soon. We'll be talking about that in just a little bit. Here are our current intensity estimates, uh, ATCF in agreement with Force 13 at 105 miles per hour, RAM multi-platform and NOAA ADT at 100, CMSS ADT at around 85 miles per hour, and SATCON being the highest estimate at around 115 miles per hour. Here's our latest cone, this just came out an hour ago, we're expecting this storm to weaken over the next few days, all the way to a tropical depression four days out before it looks like models are hinting at it re-strengthening. We have it re-strengthening to a tropical storm in five days time, and there's some indications it could get even stronger than that as we head out into the week out time frame, but again, that's very uncertain. This isn't expected to impact land regardless, but there is some uncertainty with the long-term strength of Faraji, but at least in the short term, we know it's going to be weakening for the foreseeable future. Here are our sea surface temperatures, very warm for the system right now, and they're going to be remaining quite warm as the storm does traverse the Indian Ocean over the next few days. That's not going to be the main reason that it weakens. Wind shear is going to be the main reason that it weakens, but you can see sea surface temperatures are going to be more than sufficient to maintain a tropical cyclone. Here's the h wharf's prediction. It's expecting a major cyclone to actually make its return here in a little bit before weakening does begin again. And when it comes to rainfall, none of that impacting land with some areas over water getting into the 24 to 32 inch range. Well, here are models, and again, weakening is the foreseeable trend all the way until the end of the forecast period, and you can see things leveling off at around 40 to 50 miles per hour. Wind shear right now is around 20 knots, and we're expecting wind shear to remain high-ish over the next few days before it does back off. Sea surface temperatures are looking just fine, and mid-level relative humidity is going to be the big thing that really does go downhill over the next few days, sinking all the way down to below 50% at one point during the storm's life. There's satellite imagery, and it's rather clear that the storm is trying to hold itself together, but it's not quite capable of doing so. Uh, that eye feature continues to try and stick out, but it's not quite able to. That shear, you can just see all of those um, convective cloud tops being pushed to the west there. Uh, the storm really not looking anything like it did when it was at its peak, but still it is a formidable and powerful tropical cyclone to say the least. Here's our view from Himawari, thought this would be cool to see from a different satellite view. This gives you um, a more rapid scan kind of approach to things.